You often hear that desktops are a more practical purchase over laptops, but as architects, you're usually on the move and need something more portable. In that case, it may be worth the extra dollars in buying a laptop instead. But with so many options these days, how do you choose a laptop for architecture? Today I'm going to show you what you need to be looking for in a laptop depending at what level you're at. At the end of the video, I'll be going over some bonus tips that I personally look into when purchasing a laptop and these will help you making the best possible decision. I'm Mooch and this is Pigeonhead Architecture. As architects and students of architecture, you're going to be using your laptop generally to create plans, diagrams, presentations, and renders. What you plan on doing with your laptop will allow you to decide which laptop you purchase. There are three things you want to look at when choosing your laptop for architecture, and that is RAM, processor, and graphics card. Without getting too deep into details, let's go over each one. RAM is your computer's short-term memory. Everything you have open on your computer at the time you are using it will use RAM. And a general rule of thumb is that the more RAM, the better. Most laptops come with 8, 16, or 32 gigabytes of RAM. I usually try to stick between 16 or 32 when purchasing a laptop. Something important to remember is that RAM is upgradable in most cases, so you have the option of adding more RAM in the future. I've included a link in the description which allows you to identify if the laptop you're looking into is upgradable and how much RAM you could add. Speaking of upgrades, your computer's processor is not something that is generally upgradable, so you're going to want to spend some time looking at the processors that are available. Every laptop that I've owned in the past has come with an Intel processor. These are labeled as i3, i5, i7, and now i9. Put simply, the i3 is good, i5 better, i7 is the best, and i9 is perfection. What I mean by this is that the i3 is good. It's great for basic tasks. The i5, which is better, is good for multitasking and a little bit of editing here and there. And the i7 is the best one for heavy multitasking. The i9 is good for powering a small island. If you're gonna be using your laptop only for diagrams, massing studies, and plans, then an i5 should be ideal. I have an 11 inch Lenovo that I use for Photoshop and Rhino massing on the go, and it works extremely well. Once you get into rendering, you're gonna wanna look into getting an i7. Something important to remember is the higher the processing power, the hotter your laptop will tend to run. I've also included another link that will help you see which is the best overall processor you can get for the money. The final component you're gonna be looking into is the graphics card. This is the part of your laptop that will focus solely on graphic related content. The better the graphics card, the faster your rendering times will be. If you're going to spend a lot of time on renderings, especially really intense scenes with a lot of materials and reflections, you're going to want to invest in a really good graphics card. Because there are so many graphics cards out there and they all have their pros and cons, I've included a link that will help you decide which graphics card you should buy. Keep in mind that if you're going to be using Revit, you will have access to a cloud based rendering system, which means you don't need a powerful graphics card to create renders. If you're going to be using Maya, 3ds Max, V-Ray, or Lumion, then I recommend doing some research on a good graphics card and a good place to start is the Lumion website. Link will be in the description. To conclude, which laptop you decide to buy will depend on what level you are and how much money you have to spend. When you start studying architecture, you're going to be using your laptop for basic plans, massing, and diagrammatic presentations. In this case, an i3 with 4 to 8 gigabytes of RAM and an integrated graphics card should be a fine starting point for a laptop. As you get deeper into your second and third year of architecture, you will be creating more complex designs that have more materials and more details. You will also most likely be creating animations and more detailed presentations, so minimally you will want to start with an i5 with at least 8 gigabytes of RAM and a dedicated graphics card. Ultimately, you will be creating complex animations renders, and masses in general, and if this is your case, you will want to look into at least an i7 with at least 16 gigs of RAM and the best graphics card that you could afford. At that point, it may be even worth it to look into having a desktop that you can use at home only for rendering. You might even save some money that way. I promise you guys some bonus tips that I actually use when purchasing a laptop. I just bought a 15 inch HP Omen and these are the things I looked at before I made the purchase. First is a hard drive. This is the part of the computer where you're going to store all your files. I would get as much memory as possible. I'm talking about one terabyte and up if possible. Your files are going to become huge as you progress in your studies and the more saving space you have the better. Also aim to get a solid state drive. A solid state drive allows your computer to interact with the files at a much faster speed and it's going to make a huge difference in the performance of your laptop. Next is your computer screen. Try to get one that doesn't have a glare. I made that mistake when I bought my first high end laptop for school. Every time I sat next to a window, or every time someone stood behind me, whatever I was working on was noticeably harder to see and I developed a lot of migraines. 
To avoid this, purchase a laptop with a matte screen. The point of having a laptop is for you to be able to move it around. My first high-end laptop was a 14-inch Sony. It was really light and portable and I loved it. My friends were all moving up to the giant 17-inch screens and I decided I wanted to have a larger screen as well. It really was nicer on the eyes to have a larger screen, but eventually I grew tired of having to walk around campus trying to hoister this huge boulder. If you're going to be walking around campus a lot or moving your laptop often, maybe a large laptop isn't for you and maybe you should consider looking into a 15 and a half inch screen or smaller. The fourth bonus point is the location of your laptop's battery. This isn't something I cared about until I had my Asus. You see, this laptop's battery died after a year of owning it. I sent it back, they repaired it under warranty, but 6 months later it happened again and they wanted me to pay $600 to fix it. I looked into doing it myself but discovered that the battery was embedded into the laptop so replacing the battery meant I had to open the case and disconnect the screen. In your case, if possible, purchase a laptop with an accessible battery that doesn't require you to destroy your laptop if you want to change it. Finally, the last bonus tip is to avoid getting a touchscreen. When these first came out they seemed really cool so I purchased a laptop that came with one. What happened was that every time I had a crit with a professor, they touched my screen and accidentally moved things around. Also, because I would actually use a touchscreen, it was often full of fingerprints and made it hard to see my work. So if you can, avoid the touchscreen. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know that buying a laptop can be a really stressful thing, so if you have any questions, let me know and I'll try to help you in finding a solution. Also, I'll be linking my own laptop in case you want to see the specs of what I'm using. And if you consider purchasing it, let me know and I'll give you my full honest opinion on it. Take care guys, I'll talk to you soon.